it's 2015 and I've been on a two week hiatus and now I'm back. Hi everybody, it's Lydia here. If you celebrated it, I hope you had a very good Christmas and I hope you all had a very good new year. I am back after a two week hiatus. It wasn't originally going to be a two week hiatus. Life got in the way, Christmas got in the way, new year got in the way and anyway, but now I am back. Because I've been away for so long, this is a bit of a belated video and it's basically going to be a mishmash. I'm going to do both my Christmas book haul and my bookish resolutions for this year. So yeah, it's going to be a bit of a mix around but anyway let's get on with this. I'm going to start off with my Christmas book haul except that prior to Christmas I was sent two books by headline publishers the first of which was The Testimony of the Hanged Man by Anne Granger. This is the fifth Inspector Ben Ross mystery. It is a crime novel and it is basically about this inspector who is summoned to the gallows when a guy is being hanged and usually when it gets to the point where a guy is being hanged he has normally accepted his fate and admitted that he's guilty but in this case the uh, guy being hanged still uh, protests his innocence and so Ben Ross is basically he decides to uncover the mystery about it. So it's a mystery novel. I don't actually read that many mystery or crime novels but this one looks interesting and I really love this cover. Um, it's so I don't know what it is about it, it just looks really cool so I am really looking forward to reading that. The second book I was sent by headline was A Place For Us by Harriet Evans. This is completely different to the last one. It is basically a light, happy-ish story about this family and it's uh, about where they live and it's just, you know, one of those pretty easy to read, fun, harmless sort of thing. So it looks exciting, it looks fun and this is out on the 15th of January and I will review it soon so keep an eye out for that. So now on to the books I got for Christmas. I didn't get that many books for Christmas because I had asked for a series of other things so I didn't get that many but I thought I'd start with the ones that I mentioned in my pre-Christmas wish list video. So the first one is Glamour in Glass by Mary Robinette Cowell. This is the second in the Glamourist History series. I've mentioned a lot The Shades of Milk and Honey which is the first book in this and it is basically Jane Austen meets sort of fantastical magical world. It's not however like those um, like Pride and Prejudice and Zombies that kind of thing. It's nothing like that. It is very much the same world as Pride and Prejudice and Sense and Sensibility etc except there is an added touch of magic and mystic to it. Um, and this is the second book in the series. I don't know that much about it because it's the second in the series and I don't want to read the blurb because I don't want to. I have this thing where when I start like a, a second book in a series or a third book or whatever I don't want to read the back because I already know the characters and I don't want to spoil it. So I can't tell you actually very much about this book but if you haven't read this series and you like Jane Austen then go check it out because it is actually one of the few Jane Austen inspired novels which is actually similar to Jane Austen and not just a ripoff. So go check this out. Next up is another book I mentioned in my wishlist video and that is The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. This is, it has been described as basically fan fiction of the Iliad which um, it probably kind of is. It's basically about Achilles and Patroclus who are both obviously in the Iliad and this is sort of, I think this is pre the Iliad, yeah. It's pre the fall of Troy basically. Um, so yeah, I'm not normally into this kind of book and I think maybe this might be a bit sort of gratuitous and all that jazz but I couldn't resist it because I'm a bit of a geek for kind of classical history and classical fiction and I studied the Iliad in school and loved it so I'm looking forward to reading this. I will let you know what I think about it. I hope it's better than the idea I have in my head of it but I couldn't resist it and also I really love the cover. It's really beautiful so what can possibly go wrong? Next is a book which probably pretty much everyone has already read. I'm really late to this but there we go. It is Ready Player One by Ernest Cline. For those of you who haven't read it, it is basically a love story to 80s pop culture. It's about a guy who, who is a game designer and when he dies he doesn't have any family or heirs so he decides to leave his inheritance as a easter egg in his biggest game which is a kind of virtual reality game which pretty much the entire world uh, spends most of their life 
in and it's basically about this guy trying to discover the easter egg and win the money basically uh, but it's it's chocker full of references i was born in the very late 80s so a lot of them i don't know and i'm not I'm a gamer but I'm not like a massive sort of retro gamer so there are a lot of references in here that I, I probably completely missed but um, I still really enjoyed it and the plot itself is actually really well written. It has a couple of issues which I will talk about in a review in the next couple of weeks but in overall I really enjoyed it so I would really recommend it and yeah. The penultimate book in this book haul is technically not a book but there we go. It is actually Matchstick Theatre by Michael Frayn which is a series of plays and I have to say something about this first but it is absolutely beautifully designed um, and I love it. Um, as I say it is just a series of I think it's 10... no 30 short plays. Wow. 30 plays um, so they're quite short and it's basically um, presented in a way so that it's completely devoid of all kind of set descriptions and all that jazz so that um, you can look at it from the point of view of like a director and come up with all those ideas in your head and I'm as I've mentioned before I'm very obsessed with theatre so yeah this is really exciting and I'm really looking forward to reading these. I kind of want to make a video in the future about these but I'm not quite sure what to do yet or how to do it because obviously their play so I don't know so um, if you have any ideas about how I could do it then let me know below but yeah this I just have to say this is just such a beautiful like produ produced um, book it's really cute anyway moving on so the penultimate book on this list isn't actually a book again I got a Kindle for Christmas I have resisted getting a Kindle for pretty much as long as Kindles have been a thing simply because I love books and I love reading physical books. Um, the reason I got a Kindle is because I'm going travelling this year and I'm going to be spending a lot of time on trains so thus I needed a Kindle instead of carrying you know 50 books with me everywhere. So on this I bought for my first book I bought Station Eleven by Emily St John Mandel which I know a lot of you again like Ready Player One have probably already read and really late to it. I really enjoyed it again I've already finished it but I will be doing a review of it probably this week maybe next week not sure yet um, but I'll be doing a review of that soon and it's basically um, it's a post-apocalyptic story but it's completely different to any post-apocalyptic story that I've ever read and I think most people have ever read and it's just really well written and really clever I really enjoyed it but I will give you a full review of that over the next couple of weeks so that's it for my book haul on to my bookish revolu revolutions well I'm not gonna start a revolution in 2015 I promise on to my bookish resolutions of 2015 so for 2014 my bookish resolutions were these I was gonna a read more books than I read in 2013 which wasn't difficult because I hardly read any books in 2013 so I easily passed that so for 2015 Again, I'm just going to set the resolution of reading more books in 2015 than I read in 2014. So that's a pretty simple resolution. My second resolution is, I think, one I've possibly mentioned over here before, not sure. I want to have read, by the end of this year, every single one of Shakespeare's plays. I have read a lot of them and I'm always going on about Shakespeare, as you very well know. Um, so I do love his works, but I haven't read all of them. There are a lot I haven't read. So I want to have, by the end of this year, read all of his plays. Possibly also his sonnets. I do have them, but um, yeah, not sure about those, but I definitely want to read the plays. So that's my second resolution. My third resolution is one which I've kind of actually had for a few months and pretty much failed at, and that is to read more diverse books. I did a couple of videos back in the autumn where I basically went through my bookshelf and talked about the diversity in it and the diversity in literature in general. And one of the things that really kind of troubled me, and I think it's something that has really come up over the last couple of months anyway is that there are very few um, widely proclaimed books that aren't written in the English language certainly as far as young adult and mainstream books are concerned there are so few in this country and I think probably in the majority of the English-speaking world uh, of books that aren't written 
uh, firstly in the English language and I want to read more books that weren't because I do feel that right now I'm not really getting like a very diverse reading experience and I want to read more books from other cultures and learn more about other cultures so that is my resolution for this year. Anyway that is it for today's video I'll be back tomorrow with a Tag Tuesday the first Tag Tuesday of 2015 but until then I hope you have a good day and bye!